policing the police every single day. And doing what the Charlotte County Sun newspaper and local TV stations won't do every single day. Hey, Shari County, this is Shari County Cop Watch. Uh, Andrew Sheets reported for Cop Watch for eight years and now running for sheriff because I guess you got to change from the inside. Uh, this is another story on our uh, criminal Shari County Sheriff Bill Permell. He is a criminal, third degree felony for illegal list of gun owners. And he's trying to say that I want to help people on drugs because they ruined America's economy with this fake freaking COVID-19 hoax. People are drinking, drugging big time. And I want to help you. If you give me your drugs, I'll give you help. This is absolute bullshit. He is still, even if you have medical marijuana, he's fucking with you. If you have a little tiny fucking joint, he puts you in jail. I want to help. That's a lie bullshit. He is policing for profit with their pay benefits and retirement that he gets from taxes and from all the shit that uh, when he puts you in court and jail. All the money and fees from that. So that is an absolute lie. Uh... Put him in jail for those lies. So that was your TikTok one minute intro and it gets better. So anyways, he's a liar. Um, he's had eight years to just give out a ticket. Everybody else has given out a ticket for like 20 grams and below. And uh, and that's why if you like me, I'm, I'm stopping the war on pot, period. You can have pot, smoke pot, sell pot. Grow pot. If you don't want to, if you don't want to grow your own pot, freaking you, you can hit start businesses that sell pot here. Every single place that made uh, pot legal, the the taxes are through the roof that they're bringing in for this stuff. So is people visiting their place. So money comes in. The war on pot is absolute bullshit. It used to be legal. Until they failed on the war on alcohol, which was prohibition, and they said we got to keep all these people busy. They you know, were with the DEA, the ATF, and all that shit. Let's switch it to pot, and we're going to tell people that if a black man and a Mexican smoke pot, they're going to rape you. White wife, dead serious. Look it up. That's how sick these motherfuckers are. And then. And we got Nixon in 1960 that said, hey, let's make friends with China. We'll give them all their fucking work. But now we got to keep our people busy here. Let's start the war on drugs and start the biggest fucking police state in the fucking world. And we're supposed to be a free country. We have the most people in jail and prison than the whole rest of the world. And we're supposed to be a free country. How does that work? How does that make us free? It doesn't. So, Charlotte County Sheriff Bill Permell is a goddamn motherfucking criminal liar. He is a criminal. Third degree felony for illegal list of gunners and illegally profiling them and committing misdemeanor offenses all day long in records requests because he doesn't like us exposing the corruption. So, here he is. He's on, a, he's on his blog. I really do care if you... J-. He's supposedly saying if you give him his drugs, I'll help. No. Fuck that, bud. Stop the war on drugs. Help people like it's an addiction. Quit putting them in jail. Quit putting them through all this court bullshit so they're in a fucking vicious circle. Uh, and just stop it. And here's proof of it. Ten countries that ended the war on drugs because we, you know, America's like, man, the whole world should do this and make everybody, every place a fucking police state and is, you know, and we'll call it a war on drugs worldwide. Look at this. Ten countries have said, fuck you, this is stupid, this is making it worse, this is an addiction for some, and we're going to help, not hurt. Ten fucking countries. I'm going to do a screen read on this, it's so goddamn good, alright? This fucker is policing for profit. He keeps lying to the people. I'm not making money. He gets state and federal money for every single person he, he busts for drugs and puts in jail. He's a fucking liar. Tell him to his face he's a liar. Tell him you want to put him in jail and prison for his crimes against the people. Jesus, I'm not making money. I'm not pleasing. The pay benefits of retirement he gets from taxes is so unrealistic. They made a law you can't find out how much they get on their retirement because it would piss you off. They can retire after 25 years. Can you? No, because it's a fucking white collar crime sp- Ponzi scheme. Wake the fuck up. 
Vote for freedom for once, goddammit. Vote sheets for sheriff.com. This good looking guy right there, he believes in the Constitution. I believe in the Constitution and freedom, not this unconstitutional military police state that it's policing for profit right here right now this motherfucker's a liar and i'm gonna do everything i can to put him in jail and prison for his crimes ten countries that ended their war on drugs america's war on drugs has reached a tipping point 51% of all federal prisoners between 2011 and 2013 were serving time for drug-related offenses. The war has officially been raging since the 70s when President Nixon declared drugs public enemy number one. However, strict puritanical policies regarding illicit substances began in the early 1900s. Addicts have been falling through the societal cracks ever since. A national poll conducted in April 2014 by the Pew Research Center found that a majority of U.S. citizens are ready for a change. The survey reported that 67% of Americans believe the government should focus on providing treatment for those who use illegal drugs, like cocaine and heroin. The movement towards decriminalization is already gaining momentum with states like Colorado, Oregon, Alaska, and Washington legalizing the recreational use of marijuana. Seattle is leading the charge towards a more compassionate approach to enforcement of harder drugs by introducing a program called Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion, LEAD. Offenders in the city are assigned a case manager that helps provide them with treatment, counseling, mental health services and even housing, instead of sentencing them to jail. Critics of federal drug policy believe the U.S. is behind the cultural and scientific times as it relates to drug addiction. Ten countries have successfully changed their drug laws and approach to enforcement and addiction. One Portugal, the first country in the European Union to decriminalize all drugs has seen a decline not only in arrests, but in illicit drug use overall. While there are still small fines for selling drugs, the country's focus is on rehabilitation, harm reduction, and treating addiction as a disease. Two Ecuador, in the 80s and 90s, this country could do little to stop America's war on drugs from wreaking havoc in their nation. Recently, though, Ecuador has moved to decriminalize drugs in an effort to combat cartel activity. The sale of drugs remains illegal, but Ecuadorians are allowed to possess small amounts of both soft drugs like pot and hard drugs like heroin. There is current legislation to put into place a system for treatment and rehabilitation for addicts. 3. Uruguay this nation has done something truly incredible. It formally legalized marijuana. The government sells a gram of cannabis for one dollar, which has snatched the carpet out from under the black market dealers of pot. While harder drugs are not illegal to use, it is not legal to sell cocaine or heroin. One of Uruguay's reasons for decriminalizing pot was to free resources up to deal with major drug trafficking. For Czech Republic, Czech citizens face a small fine for possession of any drugs for personal consumption. In fact, legally, they're allowed to have up to five marijuana plants and small amounts of cocaine. The government still prosecutes major drug trafficking and distribution, while offering harm reduction programs, like needle exchange programs, along with counseling and infectious disease tests. These policies have seen a reduction in the amount of drug use and overdoses in the country. 5. Switzerland The Swiss government has had harm reduction programs in place since the 1980s because of the spread of HIV-AIDS due to needle sharing. Along with needle exchanges, the government provides counseling, housing, and even supervised injection rooms for addicts. 6. Croatia this tiny country decriminalized marijuana in 2012 and has liberal policies regarding harder drugs. Croatians don't get an entirely free ride, though. If they're caught in possession of drugs, they may face fines, rehab, community service or a combination of all three. There is, however, no jail time. 7. Argentina, in 2009, the Argentinian Supreme Court unanimously ruled that punishment for the personal consumption of drugs should be considered unconstitutional. 
While this country is still experiencing cartel activity, it is moving more toward addiction as a public health issue and not criminal activity. 8. The Netherlands Most people are familiar with Amsterdam as being a pot-smoking tourist destination. It's legal in this country to possess up to 5 grams of marijuana. There are laws in place prohibiting the sale of pot to coffee shops that sell to tourists. However, they're not enforced. Cities in the Netherlands can also ban tourists from buying and smoking pot if they so choose. 9. Australia Technically, drugs are still illegal down under. In 2001, though, the government opened supervised injection sites where addicts could safely use drugs. There is medical help on staff if needed, as well as long-term help if asked for. Decriminalization has not yet entirely become law as of yet. 10. Mexico, our neighbors to the south have certainly gotten the brunt of drug smuggling activity and violence from both cartels and the American-led war on drugs. In 2009, the government decriminalized drugs, including LSD, cocaine, and heroin. Policymakers hope that legalization will dampen the thriving black market that exists in the country. No country in the world is immune to drug misuse and addiction, but prosecution has been going on long enough to realize it hasn't helped reduce abuse or addiction. In fact, not only has the sale and trafficking of illegal substances increased, but the prison population for drugs has escalated. When 10 very different countries around the world have decriminalized drugs and found declines in usage, overdoses, and arrests, it's a surefire signal that other countries should, at the very least, look at the alternatives to the war on drugs and treat it as a public health issue instead of a moral dilemma. Maybe then, we will find help for those that need it most. Hey, Shara Connie, this is Shara Connie Copwatch. I am using any video here with under fair use if you uh, have criticism, reporting, teaching, etc. And please donate. I do not make money from YouTube. And uh, there are different ways to donate in the uh, video links. Thanks.